welcome to Kentucky State University Aquaculture Research Center. My name is Janelle Hager and I'm the research associate here for aquaponics at the university. Right now we're in our aquaponics demonstration greenhouse where we showcase all different types of aquaponics systems from deep water culture, nutrient film technique to media based systems. We get a lot of interest in folks wanting to do backyard aquaponics. So today we're going to be teaching you how to build your own IBC aquaponics system. For more information, you can visit our website at ksuaquaculture.org or you can visit us on social media at KSU Aquaculture. So before we get started, I just want to go over some safety tips for you. Um, we will be using some power tools, heavy duty kind of uh, tools to cut this thing open and, and get started. So just wanted to go over a few things. The first thing is um, we are safety glasses. We're going to be using a grinder, a drill, and a hole saw to kind of get this thing going. So we want to make sure that we're just protecting our eyes, wear the appropriate footwear, boots, long pants, things like that. Um, some of you you can use a couple different pieces of equipment to cut the tote open the, both the bars and the actual plastic pieces i prefer a grinder because it gives me a little bit more control but you can also use things like a sawzall with a metal cutting blade and they also have a sawzall with a plastic blade as well so whatever you feel the most comfortable with is fine but just make sure that all of your safety equipment like your guards are installed on your tools and the batteries are out when you're not using it that's a pretty important point it's optional if you want to wear a respirator mask while you're um, operating the tools. Some of those plastic pieces uh, can be flying everywhere, so it's good if you not to inhale those. So if you want to wear a mask just to be on the safe side, that's always a good option. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first steps of uh, getting this toad apart. This is Josh Dushi. He's our graduate research assistant in aquaponics. He's been working with us for about a year and he's gonna be uh, doing all the heavy lifting today as we go through how to make this tote. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, get this, the plastic tote out. So we're going to just tip it on its side <laughs> and um, pull, oh, sorry. So the first thing Josh is going to do is uh, separate the, the cage of our fish tank uh, from the what's now going to become our plant bed, which is the bottom part. So typically when you do this, and this is going to be a little bit different depending on the exact arrangement of your tote, but typically that first bar is going to be kind of your, your goal right there. So Josh is going to take the grinder, which is a metal uh, grinding blade, and he's going to um, cut the tote right at the top of this bar. You kind of want to get as close as you can uh, to that this um, horizontal rung right here, and that way you don't have any uh, sharp pieces sticking up in your plant bed. So as Josh finishes cutting the the bars, it's just. Uh, good to be aware that those pieces of metal are actually really sharp and you can uh, you know, cut yourself pretty easily on those. In addition, just the friction of that grinder on the metal also makes it pretty hot. So those are just a couple things to be aware of as you're doing it. It's always nice to work with a partner so they can come and kind of make sure that you're, like this wouldn't fall on, your, on you when you're cutting the last few pieces. couple different ways that you can do this depending on what you want to grow. So in this case, you know, this tote will be for leafy greens and lettuces, things that don't really have a big uh, root mass. And so that's okay to have a pretty shallow bed for that. If you wanted to do um, like peppers or tomato, flowering plants like that, you probably want a little bit deeper grow bed. So maybe around 14 inches uh, deep. And so that way it'll give your roots a little bit more room to, to grow and spread out in, in the bed. So, but for this purpose, we're just going to be doing a really shallow grow bed and um, let's get started. <laughs> okay. 
Now that Josh has marked off uh, where he's going to cut, we're just going to take the tote out of the grow bed. And we've, I put a new blade on the grinder, so we have a nice fresh start there. Uh, cutting through that metal really dulls that blade, so you're probably going to want to get two or three blades to get through the project. So um, again, we've also used circular saws, um, cutting tools. We have just found the best way to do it is with a grinder because it just offers us a little bit more control and precise cutting as we go through this process. So we have set up here the basic design of what this system is going to look like. So uh, this is not the exact product because we're actually going to be moving this grow bed back a little bit so we can actually access our fish tank in there. And we'll just do that by um, cutting some wood that's going to support the, the top of this tank. Uh, and we'll show you that a little bit later in the video. The next thing we're going to be doing is sealing this cap to our tote. So this is actually the bottom of our tote, so we've just flipped it over so we can have room, some room to work. And so this cap just screws on. So I'm just going to put some uh, thread tape and then a little bit of silicone um, inside of the threads of this cap. And so that way it has a nice tight seal on it. And then um, we're going to flip it over and seal the inside of the, uh, the ring as well, so the inside of this cap. So this is thread tape, it's or called uh, plumber's tape. And so when you put this on, you want it to go in the direction that you're tightening it. So if you put it on the wrong way, and in this case, it's gonna be uh, clockwise, so I'm gonna be going around clockwise. If you um, do it the other way, then it's actually gonna unthread itself and not get a nice seal as you're tightening it. So I'm just gonna start here. This is pretty small thread tape, so I'm just gonna really wrap it around there and put some on. So I'm just taking a dry cloth and just trying to get any of the dirt out of this thing. Um, good idea to kind of just clean it with water or something and then dry it off really well before you use it. Um, this is uh, Goop, that's the name of it. Um, you can just buy it at any hardware store. I don't necessarily recommend using this, There's, but what's important is you get a silicone or some type of sealing waterproof um, like caulk that you can use to actually seal this, uh, this these threads on there. So um, I typically use a, a silicone that you can find in the paint department at your hard, local hardware store. Um, it could be clear, white, almond colored, whatever color you really want. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you're getting a, a complete uh, water retention inside your tank and that's what we're really going for. So don't be shy with this stuff. It's not that expensive and you can really, uh, it'll save you a huge headache later on if you sit and dry um, before we put any water in it. So you can see that I have a, a nice, a lot of goop in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, onto my cap right here. I mean, my cap on these threads. I'm gonna get a nice, um, I can feel it starting, it's a lot tighter already, which I, makes me happy because I feel like it's gonna be, have a really good seal on it. And I just want to put that on as tight as possible, and I'm going to leave it just like that, and we're going to let it sit and dry. Um, so typically it takes about 24 hours for this stuff to dry. That's particularly true with silicone. So um, if you wanted to really make sure that it's not going to leak, give it about 24 hours. Um, in, a, in a pinch, when I really want to just get the project done, I've given it about two to three hours to, to dry, and that seems to work fine just as well. But on the package, it'll tell you wait 24 hours. <laughs> so now we've turned our tank over and we're just gonna seal the inside. So if you see here, there's just this opening here. We've already sealed those threads, but this is just kind of like for good measure. If you're doing a media-based system where you have the expanded clay or some kind of rocks in here, you don't wanna have to take that out. So you wanna make sure that this is done and really, really sealed uh, before you even put anything in there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of make sure that that's nice and sealed in there. Um, 
So we have a couple different options for um, what we're going to use to actually put our stand pipe in place. This is called a uniseal, and this is a one inch uniseal. And basically what it is, it's just like a rubber gasket, and uh, it fits uh, right down into the plastic. And as that pipe, the one inch pipe that we're using, is forced through there, that ring expands and it creates a watertight seal. So these are really, really useful. They're really cheap. You can order them online, and um, you can actually order them by the you know five pack if you want. But they generally cost only a couple dollars uh, total just to use one of these. So this is what we're going to be using today. So, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to be drilling the hole that goes into our tank. This is a really important step because obviously you don't want to have holes in the bottom of your tank. So really make sure you have the right hole saw size for your fitting. So if you're using a uniseal, you can look online and see what size hole saw you're going to need. This is a one inch fitting and so uh, based on their guidelines, we need a one and three quarter inch hole saw. called bulkhead fittings. Um, this is what I just found at the local hardware store, so that's really convenient. Um, they come in all different types of sizes. Um, and then this is one, a, a, a different one that I've, we've ordered online. And basically how this works is um, this uh, gasket screws off of the thread, and it has a rubber seal right here that's going to be on the inside of your tank, or it can be on the outside, kind of wherever you choose to put it. Um, in our cases, it would be on the inside of our grow bed. And um, so you would put this through the tank, and then this screws up on the other side. And so as it tightens and you get a really good uh, fit in there, it's going to create a seal, a waterproof seal there. So these are really great. They're a little bit more expensive than the uniseals. Um, if, you're, if your system is going to be outside, um, the, the changing temperature and the weather will actually wear this rubber down over time. So you are probably going to have to replace this every three to four years. With something like a bulkhead, you probably would never have to replace it. So um, just one more thing of note, a lot of these bulkheads come in a slip or threaded fittings. So you, uh, I personally like to get the slip fittings, and that way my pipe can just slide right down in here and it comes out on the other side. Um, this one has a threaded fitting on it, so if you get a threaded fitting, you're going to need a male adapter to fit in there so uh, you can put your standpipe in. And on the other side, to, for the drain section, um, you would either need to get a female fitting or you can be, it can be a male fitting here. So uh, I just like to get the slip fittings because then I don't have to worry about uh, buying those extra parts. But if you have this laying around, it'll work just fine. You just have to kind of uh, make it work to what you need to do for the projects. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to see where our, our, um, our standpipe needs to be inside the tank so it can drain effectively into our, back into our fish tank. Um, this particular IBC tote has um, a, a more shallow uh, dip in it, and so that's where we're going to be putting the standpipe in this system. And so I want to just make sure that uh, wherever I mark for the standpipe, that it's going to go be, be directly under our tank. Because you can see that you don't want to be drilling it over here um, and then having trouble with it actually going back into your fish tank. I have seen some people go right through the cap um, or put their standpipe in the center of the tank. I like to put it on the side, and that way I can access it and fix any issues with it if they might arise um, when I'm actually operating the system. So I like to do it in this corner here so I have access to it. So as I mark where my standpipe is going to be, I want to kind of position it so I, I know where it's going to be on the, on the metal. So that metal is actually divoted underneath as well. So I want to try to make it in a place that's going to be really easy for me to cut the actual metal. Um, and so Josh has the one and three quarter inch hole saw ready to go for our uniseal. And he's going to cut through the tank where we marked it off uh, earlier in the video. And uh, then we'll get to making our uh, standpipe and our bell siphon. So often when you drill uh, through this plastic, stick tank with the hole saw, you're going to have these little wiry things sticking up. You want to make sure and, and uh, remove those, even if just take a really light piece of sandpaper if you want to, to clean that up. 
it's that's really important when you're using these uniseals because you don't want to have any uh, room for water to go through there. If you're using a bulkhead fitting, it gets uh, smashed so tightly in there that you really it's really not a problem. But for a uniseal, you want to make sure that there's uh, you have a really clean surface for that gasket to go through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a just trace a line. Uh, where my hole is going to be and then Josh is going to cut out a little um, square around there so we can actually get the uh, standpipe to go through through the tank and so he'll do that with the grinder and then this is how the uniseal works so the uniseal is like this and it just um, pops down in there theoretically there you go and you can see that that's a really tight fit in there. So it takes a little bit of effort for me to get that through there. And that's really what you want because that's what's going to expand as the standpipe gets pushed through there and give you that really nice watertight seal. The next step, putting in our standpipe, is a really important step. Um, because we're using a uniseal, the, the length of our standpipe can actually be adjusted really easily. So we can, we, wanna, we can cut it a little bit long, the bottom of the standpipe will go down into our fish tank, and then we can adjust that height um, just by moving that standpipe up or down. If you're using a bulkhead fitting, you're going to want to be a little bit more precise in your measurements here. So, um, and how we dictate the height of our standpipe is uh, how, where we want the water level to be in the tank. So typically if you're doing a raft system, you're going to have probably one and a half inch piece of foam uh, insulation as your raft. So you're going to want to have uh, your standpipe be you know, right at that level where you want your water level to be. If you're doing a media based system, you actually want your standpipe to be about two inches below your media and that could be an inch and a half just to kind of depending on how tall your your bed is so what I like to do is I like to say I don't want my media to be to the very top so I'll give it about an inch and then I give it about another two inches for my standpipe um, and the reason why we want our standpipe to be a little bit shorter on the media beds is because we don't want that water filling up to the top and then algae will grow all over the top of the media so having that little buffer zone prevents any issues with algae growing in your system the height of this grow bed is about 11 inches. So I'm going to cut my standpipe for about uh, 13 inches, and that'll give me a little bit of room um, underneath, and it'll give me some room on the other side to put my elbows down there. So this is a one inch PVC pipe. It's Schedule 40. I generally use Schedule 40 PVC, which is for pressure. You don't need it because none of your system is going to be under pressure, but it just keeps my fittings all the same. So this is a pipe cutter. It's a kind of a heavy duty one. It's a battery operated one, so you don't kill your, your hand doing it. We also have a mechanical one. It just slips around the pipe like this, and you click it shut to cut the pipe. Um, or if you don't have those handy, you can always just use a saw or a chop saw to, to cut your pipe with. OK, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually put this standpipe through our uniseal. This being rubber, it's really hard to get that through there. It is a really tight fit, as you can see from earlier in the video. So we need a little bit of lubrication to get that through there. I just like use water. Um, I'll, you can use spit. You can use Vaseline, anything that is not petroleum based. And uh, it should go through there. So it's a little bit difficult to get that pipe in there. But once it goes through there, you'll be able to push it down to where you need your standpipe to be. So here you can see that the pipe is just coming directly through that uniseal. And that's uh, when I was talking about moving it up and down. These are really convenient because you can just adjust the, your standpipe height without really having to do any extra cutting or anything like that. So as you can see, the, now we have a direct line from our plant bed into what is going to be our fish tank. So now we're going to show you how to make the actual bell siphon that's going to go over top of your standpipe. So there is a link to how to do this on right below this video. So go check that out. It's uh, from the University of Hawaii and it takes you step by step how to make this siphon. It's a great document and it has troubleshooting guides at the end of it. So 
Um, you're going to need different size standpipes and different size uh, bells depending on how much square foot of grow space you're going to be flooding and draining. So to make the bell, we're going to be using a piece of 2 inch PVC pipe, a 2 inch cap. We're going to be using our tubing here and the sizing you can find in the bell siphon PDF that we just mentioned. And then our other thing we're using is uh, some PVC glue and some cleaner. Okay. So Josh is going to demonstrate how to do this. So first he's going to apply the cleaner to the pipe and then he's going to glue it together. So what you're going to do as you move through this is you're going to put the cleaner on the outside of the pipe and on the inside of the fitting. Then with your PVC glue, you're going to have to work pretty quickly because you only have about, you know, 10 seconds if it's hot outside to make this work. So you're going to want to move pretty fast. So you apply it liberally to the uh, outside of your pipe again and the inside of your fitting. And then when you push them together, you're going to do um, a, a twist. And that what that does is it smears that glue in there and you can see it's already set. So we really don't have a lot of time to work here. So you really want to move kind of fast through this. It's also really important when you're, do, you're gluing these pipes together to kind of hold that pipe for just a second because as that glue expands when it reacts with our cleaner and as that glue expands, it's going to want to push that cap off. So you want to make sure that you're just holding it on there till it's nice and secure um, on your pipe. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to take our tubing and we're going to find a drill bit, as you can see here, that is uh, the diameter of our tubing. And so it needs to be a pretty tight fit in there. So the, the way to make this work successfully is to not have any air at all that can get that inside that siphon uh, or else it won't start a siphon at all. So if any air can get in there, it's not going to work. So we want to make sure that the drill bit that we're using has a really tight fit around that pipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually drill through the cap and then uh, through our pipe. So we're going to make a hole that goes all the way uh, into the middle. You just want it to go through one wall of the pipe make sure it doesn't come out the other side, okay? So the next step we're gonna do is fit our tubing into our hole that we just drilled. If you have a hard time fitting it through there, you just uh, add a little lubricant on there, some water or whatever, and just make sure it goes about halfway into your pipe. Um, so our standpipe is seven and a quarter inches. So what we want is we want our standpipe to hit right at this junction right here. So right where that cap and the PVC pipe is visible. So Josh is going to take his ruler and he's going to measure down seven and a quarter inches. And that's going to be the height of our bell. So the next step is to seal our uh, tube into our bell. So Josh is going to be putting the, the sealant all along the outside of his uh, pipe right here. And the trick here is, is when he's done, you really want to get a lot of it on there because you really want a tight seal, is to kind of smear that uh, sealant against the pipe and also against the uh, tube. And so that way we know that there's a really tight seal there. This is also one of those places where there cannot be too much sealant on there. So we're just going to uh, let that sit for just a minute and then we're going to finish up um, the rest of our project. So this is the water pump we're using. Um, it's a great water pump. It's about 635 gallons per hour. And so when you're looking for a water pump, it's really important that you get a water pump that is sized correctly for your system. And I like to oversize my water pumps a little bit. And as we start building this pump up, we're, I'll show you how to plumb in a return so it doesn't put any back pressure on your pump. Um, I really like getting an oversized pump as well because if um, you, know, you wanted to expand your system, you don't have to rebuy this part. And these you know, typically run between like $30 to $75. Um, but this is a really great uh, pump. We use them in our systems here. And um, this is a one inch outlet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some thread tape around this uh, outlet so I have a good nice seal on there.
For this fitting, you don't want to use too much or else you're not going to be able to actually screw down your adapter. So this, since this is a threaded fitting, I'm going to put this female adapter on there that is threaded on one side and a slip fitting on the other. Okay, now we're going to go over to our fish tank and we're going to do some measurements and then we will uh, finish plumbing this in. The next thing we're going to do is uh, plumb our pump in. So we need to get the height of how, high, uh, how tall we need to cut our, our PVC pipe. So we're going to put our pump on the opposite side of our standpipe. And the goal of this is you want to measure how high your um, pipe needs to be to come right over the railing. And what we're going to do is this pipe is going to come up and we're actually going to send our water on this side of our standpipe. So that way we're not uh, flooding our grow bed uh, and the same end that it's draining from. So you just want this uh, pipe to come right over the edge. So, so we know that the total height from our pump uh, to the top of our grow bed to go over that edge is 42 inches. But first we're going to plumb a return into that. So we've measured the inside of the tank just to kind of the height of the, the fish tank part. And we're going to cut this at 20 one inches. And then we'll show you how to fit that together. The total height from the pump to our grow bed will be 42, but we'll get there in just a second. So what we're going to do is uh, one of our ends is going to go in here. So Josh is going to glue all this together. And then we have a one inch T that's going to go on here. Then our uh, another pipe is going to come up and continue on to our grow bed but we need to glue this together first so we can measure how, what our total height needs to be. All right, so now we want our total height to be 42 inches. So measure from the inside here. Yeah. Okay, so um, in the inside of this T has about an inch lip in it. So we're going to have to uh, account for that. So we'll just add on an extra inch there. So we need um, 19 and a half inches to get us up to 42. So now we're going to plumb our return in. It's really simple to do that. So we have our pump. Water is going to be coming up here. Uh, attached to our T, we're going to use a one inch ball valve. And what this does is it just, as you turn it, if you, you can see like that, that means it's not allowing any water through there. So what we're going to do is Josh is going to cut out a couple pieces of one inch pipe. They don't have to be very long, but this is what the end product is going to look like. Right? So as this is more open, more water is going to be allowed to go back into our fish tank and less water is going to be moving through our upper pipe here to go to our grow bed. And that's how we're going to regulate the water flow into our grow bed. So it's a really quick and easy way to do that. Um, and we don't have to worry about over having an oversized pump. So we, if we find a pump that's like cheaper, for example, but it's more than capacity than we need, we can use this and uh, you know, not have to worry about that. So now we have our final product here. You have your return line plumbed in. It's connected to our pump. So now what we're going to do is just going to place it into our bed here, and we're going to put the final finishing touches on it. So um, all of these pipes here are going to be under pressure from your pump. So you want to make sure that all of these pipes are glued in. So I'm just going to dry fit this on to kind of show you what it looks like, and we'll go back and glue it after. So we're going to have our elbow come up here. This pipe could be just a hair shorter, but um, you know, just kind of up to you if you want, it gives you a little bit more play. And again, the measurements in this video uh, are just specific to this tote. You're going to want to make sure and measure all of these yourself um, as you go through making your own. And so we're going to fit all these together. Um, Josh is going to come back and glue them, but we're just going to fit them together like this so it can show you what it looks like. Um, like this. So this is what our final product is going to be. So we're going to have our water coming up directly from our pump. Um, I like to zip tie this together so it gives, makes it a little bit more sturdy and it's not going to move at all. Um, 
and then it'll flood into our grow bed and then we'll finish making our bell siphon over there um, and then we can show you how it all works together. So the next thing we're going to do is stabilize our uh, bed on top of the fish tank. So what I've done is I want to give myself a little bit more room in the front here to kind of, you know, get my net in there, mess with my pump, get my air stone in, all that kind of stuff. So I've just uh, moved this bed back a little bit and I've done that with these wooden supports here. So they're just regular two by fours and we're going to secure the, this top bracket to the wood using these uh, three quarter inch U brackets. Fit that U bracket over the bar and make a mark where I'm going to screw it in. And that way uh, when we will do that all around on all the sides and then we can actually take this top piece off, screw our brackets in and then bend them back over the bar and then screw the outer uh, side in. If you have a really long drill bit and can kind of get in there and do it, it's easier to do it that way. But um, this is just kind of a way that we found to make sure that it like, really fits on there very well. So to finish off our bell siphon, what we've done is we've taken our grinder and just the thick grinding blade and just cut little notches in the bottom of this siphon. So I've just done four notches. Um, if you don't want to use a grinder, you can use a PVC cutter, anything like that. All you want is just um, a way for the water to get through and up and under this siphon and go out your standpipe. So, um, so that's what that looks like here. Um, so how this works is the water is going to go through these notches and up under this bell and um, as the water fills up in your grow bed, the water is also going to fill up in this tube. And once it hits that standpipe and starts going over the top of the standpipe, it's going to create a siphon through there. And so your bed's going to drain really, really quickly. And then um, as the water in your bed starts to run out, it's going to suck air up into this tube and it'll break the siphon and allow your bed to fill up again. And that's how we're going to get our flood and drain cycle. Um, in order to do that, um, you know, a couple things need to be taken care of. Um, a lot of people have experienced problems with bell siphons. They're honestly my favorite way. We've, here at KSU, we've been operating uh, flood and drain systems with bell siphons for five years continuously and never had a problem. So some of the things you just need to be aware of if your siphon's not breaking is maybe just uh, shortening the length of this tube and also controlling how much water is going up into your grow bed. Just to put the finishing touches on our system here, again, this is a flood and drain system that we're building here. If you just wanted to do a raft system, you'd pretty much be done by now. You just have to add the air uh, aerator in there, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So um, just to finish up, if you're doing a flood and drain or media-based system, so this is what our bell siphon looks like uh, completed. This is actually just going to slip right over the top of your standpipe. And as you can see, um, the height of my standpipe is just about equal with where the cap and the PVC meet. And so that's going to be key to getting the siphon to work properly. So I'm going to just slip this over the top of my siphon here. And then um, this is our gravel guard. And so this is going to prevent that, those, that media from actually getting sucked up and interfering with how the siphon operates. So when I teach people how to make these systems or you know, help them set them up in their backyard or whatever, it's key. Once this thing goes on there, this needs to go over top of your bell siphon and into your bed, and it should never, ever, ever move. So don't touch it. Don't even look at it after it's in there. And then what I like to do is I'll put a um, piece of uh, concrete, like a stone or something, uh, paper over top of this gravel guard while I'm putting the media in there and that prevents any of those rocks from getting up and under the gravel guard. Um, it's a total pain if uh, this thing moves and you get gravel up underneath there. It's just uh, a nightmare to deal with. You'll have to take all that media out and put it back in. So this is nothing special. It's just a six inch piece of PVC and we've just cut holes in the bottom of it so the water can go through there but it keeps the media out. So you can see the water level slowly rising up through that tube 
And once that tube gets filled with water, that should kick on our siphon, which is happening right about now. So now the siphon's fully kicked on, and you can see, you know, a good stream of water coming out back into your fish tank. Um, you know, this is draining your grow bed, but this is also putting clean, oxygenated water back into the system for your fish to, to use. Keeps draining down, it'll start getting to the point where the air will actually start getting wicked up through the tubing. Um, once enough air gets wicked up through the tubing, then that'll stop your bell siphon um, and that'll start the process back over again where it starts to fill the tank. So there goes the air wicking up through. You'll start to hear a gurgling sound from your siphon. Um, as long as the flow rate's not too high, this should kick off your siphon, like what just happened there, and that'll start the process over again. So if you're like me, there's, you find a lot of these resources online, but it's really hard to follow the design on the paper. And so that's why we made this video, so we can walk you through step-by-step step how to build and be successful at aquaponics using this small-scale system.